Welcome back. Uh, this is video 10 in my compositing video series. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a cast shadow pass that you can use to composite a character so that they feel grounded in their environment. Uh, this is an example of a cast shadow pass here where you can see kind of the character's shoe uh, and then here's the cast shadow onto the ground. Uh, everything else is pretty much pure white. Well, uh, I've got my scene set up from the previous video and uh, I already have a character shadow uh, pass created. Uh, that's this layer here. I should say layer. It's a, a character shadow layer. Um, what I'm going to do in this layer is I'm going to create uh, two materials. Uh, first off, uh, in the Hypershade, Window Rendering Editor, Hypershade, I'm going to create one material to enable the reception of shadows for the background. Uh, in fact, I actually already have one of these in this scene. I've pointed it out in a previous video. Uh, that's this Use Background Shadow Receive material. I'm going to drag this out here to my foreground to take a look at this. Uh, this is a Use Background material. Uh, it is specular color black, reflectivity off, reflection limit off, all at zeros. Uh, my shadow mask is set to 1 and my matte opacity is set to 1. My solid matte is, or my matte opacity mode is set to solid matte instead of opacity gain. Uh, and these are the settings that I'm going to need to make this work. Now because um, this scene is, um, the camera angle is just facing right here, I can actually be a bit more conservative with what I'm doing. Uh, I'm actually going to go into my uh, hypergraph and uh, remove out all of the elements that I don't need for this backdrop. Uh, I'm going to remove out the whole backdrop first and then kind of put it in piece by piece. So I select this uh, bus stop geo layer in character shadow. I'm going to say remove selected objects. Uh, then so I can see this, I'm going to go back to the master layer. Uh, I'm going to select just the bus stop part. I don't really need the rest of the environment because that really doesn't show up here. I just I don't need those parts. I'll select just the bus stop, and if I want to be more specific, I can just select the ground, the trash, the building. I don't need this bus sign up here. We're not going to see that. Um, I don't need this sign on the side. I don't really need this phone booth there. Um, I don't need my road signs. I don't need my little gas pump. Uh, I don't need my guardrail, and I, I don't need the bollards that are there. So really, I can probably just take these three groups and add them into my shadow pass. Right-click, add selected objects, and uh, we pretty much just have these elements here. Now, I really don't need anything else. So I have this uh, established. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these objects that I've selected, and I'm going to add this uh, use background shadow receive element assign background material to selection and I've got uh, pretty much all of these objects here now uh, in the scene with that shadow receive ability. This is a use background material that's going to allow it just to receive shadows. Well I now and uh, I'm realizing I probably want to put it on this bag as well. I missed that. Let's assign you to that bag. Awesome. All right. So what I want to do now is uh, I want to change some properties of these uh, green objects as well. I want any object that is here that is green that is going to receive a shadow to also not cast a shadow of its own because I don't want all of this to have shadows. I just want it to receive shadows just from my character. The shadows from the building are already rendered into the base render from previously. So if we look at the um, oops, wrong master beauty there. Uh, if we look at the original Master Beauty image, uh, I already have these shadows rendered into that image. Now I could separate those out as well through this process, but I'm just going to separate out the character right now and uh, we'll have just these deep shadows. Um, so all of these objects, I have to get rid of their shadow casting ability. I could go through this incredibly tedious process of one by one right clicking on each object in the shape nodes render stats going to create layer override and unchecking cast shadows and I can do this one by one for all of my objects as you can probably imagine that would totally suck so 
what we're going to do instead here is I'm just going to select all of the objects and do this all at once. There's a very quick way to do this all at once. I've got my display layers here and I'm going to use these to very quickly just hide out my character and his cane. And I'm going to hide out the lights as well. By the way, I'm going to assign my shadow receive to the sky dome as well. I realized I'd forgotten to do that too. I'm going to select all of these objects, just my green objects, just my, my bus stop and my sky dome, all of these parts that are here. And uh, I'm going to go into Window, General Editors, Attribute Spreadsheet, which is going to open up this window, which kind of shows everything. Here, I can go into the Render tab. And you can see all of those properties that were available in the Attribute Editor are available as a spreadsheet. Well, I wanted to turn off cast shadows on all of these objects. So I am going to select the cast shadows column in this attribute spreadsheet. And I am going to go to, sorry, one second, layer, create override for selected which will automatically create an override for these. I will drag a selection on this. Dragging all the way down to the bottom. And then I'll just type off and hit enter. And all of these are going to turn off in this layer. So I've got my cast shadows on my character shadow layer. It's off here. If I go back to master layer, notice that they're all on, except for the sky dome, because my sky isn't casting shadows at all ever. And uh, in the shadow layer, all of their cast shadows are off. That means the objects themselves aren't going to cast shadows. They are just going to receive shadows. I can turn my character back on, and I can turn his cane on, and we're pretty much good there now save out this scene so far. Next up, I don't want my character to render again. I don't want to have him rendered out with the shadows casting. I could, and I can do this in lieu of having my own little foreground layer, uh, but I'm just going to render out my character as a white mask so I just have the shadow. To do this, I'm going to make a white surface shader, which I already have here. I called it uh, white, pretty much. It's uh, out color is white. It's out matte opacity is white. And uh, I'm going to select in my hypergraph my entire character node and assign the white material to that. And there we go. He's now cut out. Remember my render settings for this, I had turned off my uh, final gather and other features just to kind of make this simplified. And I now should have, if I render this out, I should have just my, so there's final gather, it's off. I should have just my shadows when I render this out. Now, this would take a minute or two to render, so I'll just kind of go back here. It would look like this when rendered. Uh, we don't need to actually do the render test for this. That's it. There's my shadow casting render. So this has been video 10 on how to create a foreground shadow casting pass. So you can composite this on top of your background. In video 11, we're going to look very similarly on how to create a reflections pass. So please stay tuned for that one.